Hello and welcome to the second edition of Trinity Forum for 2010. With us today is film aesthetician Dr. George Wilson. As a professor of philosophy and cinematic arts at the University of Southern California, his main research interests lie in film aesthetics, theory of action, and philosophy of language. He has also done a fair amount of work on interpretive, uh, interpretive work on individual movies. Trinity University is proud and honored to welcome Dr. George Wilson. Hi, thank you for joining us. Proud so, and honored to be here. But, uh, so <laughs> why the Coen brothers, the man who wasn't there, why Harry Frankfurt's essay on bull How do these two very different works come together into a single project? Well, it was, right, I mean, I had seen the man who wasn't there, and I don't know if you've, seen it yet, but I mean, it's a very odd movie. I mean, it's sort of set up with this film noir type plot, but then towards the end, these aliens from outer space come in. And I think to myself, what in hell's name is that about? <laughs> okay, and uh, one of the things that is clear, the barber played by Billy Bob Thornton is clearly, and this is sort of typical of a noir, a noir hero, you know, really alienated from all the people around him. And uh, also, sort of typical of the Cohen brothers, I mean, you got these big talkers. I mean, uh, the lawyer, the, you know, just a complete bull and uh, and I, and I, I got to think, well, look, you know, part of what this guy is alienated by is just all this, I mean, there isn't any other good word in English for it than bull you know? And so, you know, I used the Harry Frankfurt article to sort of explain what I regarded as sort of the, the source of the alienation on the part of the character. Now, why the aliens come in later in the movie, that's a somewhat different question. But, uh. So, do you think that the man who wasn't there is a, uh, well, would you refer to it as a philosophical film? Well, you know, we were talking about that a little bit yesterday, and it's, yeah, I mean, there's a way in which it certainly has philosophical themes of various kinds, although there are also themes that derive from movies like film noir and uh, so on. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't have any problem about thinking of it as a philosophical film. I mean, you know about the Cohen brothers that one was a philosophy major at Princeton and the other was a uh, film student at NYU. And there's, you know, in a lot of their movies there are at least philosophical jokes and I think there are other movies that have sort of philosophical themes. Uh, do you think that film as an art form can uniquely sort of illustrate these philosophical ideas or do you think that any representational art can do a similar thing as what you've tried to do with the man who wasn't there in this context? Well, I mean, you know, if suppose I tried to write, or suppose that uh, one of the Cohen brothers tried to write a novelization of the man who wasn't there, th that novel could capture a lot of the themes and elements, psychological things that are in, in the movie. But they obviously couldn't capture it in the same way, not with the same impact. Uh, uh, not one of the things, well, just for example, the man who wasn't there is full of references to earlier sort of film laws from the 40s and stuff like that. It'd be very hard to see how you get that kind of echoing effect. Mm -hmm. So you're, you know, the way in which your question is hard to answer, up to a point, yes, a work of literature could do many of the same things, but not everything. Mm -hmm. um, lately, there's there's been a, an increased popularity in uh, the of, of popular film philosophy. Do, do you have uh, such as um, the books coming out of the philosophy of the Matrix, stuff like this? Do you, do you have an opinion about that sort of material? Mm -hmm. Mixed, uh, mixed in the sense. Well, look, I've long been a believer that uh, out of all the not so great stuff that came out of Hollywood or, or even, you know, stuff that's great entertainment, uh, yeah, 
you know, only a certain amount of it would you take very seriously. But, you know, I have long thought that there were films, you know, popular films. Most of the films I've written on over the years have been popular films. Mm -hmm. so I do believe in that. Some of, uh, they're really, as you sort of suggested, become almost a fad, though. I mean, I right. think that philosophy in The Simpsons sold Lord knows how many <laughs> copies. And I get requests all the time from you want to write. And a lot of it is not very good quality, right. I think. Okay. Just sort of follow up on that. Yeah. You said that the philosophy in The Simpsons has sold a lot of copies. Do you think that the pressure to sort of continue the series is making for bad work to be possible, or? Well, I mean, certainly provides a way for it to get out more easily. I mean, you know, it is a very odd thing in a way that uh, I would have thought that when I first started it on this, the demand for philosophers writing on film was about non-existent. <laughs> you know, that uh, there were other, I wasn't the only one. There's a guy that taught for years at Harvard, Stanley Cavell, so there was work, but it was all pretty academic work. I don't think that, uh, uh, you know, it was very widely read, even among people that had some interest in film. And now, somehow this has changed uh, with uh, all these anthologies trying to link philosophy to TV shows and so on. So when it comes to philosophy of film, what what areas would you say need further exploration or further work done? Yeah, that, that is hard. I don't know if I really completely believe that philosophy of film is a distinct discipline mm -hmm. from film study. Like, for example, <laughs> there is lots of work in the history of film that, you know, has been done but still needs to be done. But I don't know that philosophers are the most likely contributors right. to work in the history of, of film. So what, you know, what do philosophers do? One thing I've done over the years, and I'm somewhat, not unique, uh, but somewhat unusual, I have done quite a bit of sort of close interpretive work with individual movies. That's what I'll be doing tonight with the man who wasn't there. And I do think that that's valuable because when I write something on film, what I'm trying to do for a potential audience is not convince them that, oh boy, you know, this, this particular movie is heavy with philosophy and so on. I'm trying to kind of guide you through the movie in such a way that you see it in a different way with different things hooked up uh, uh, and it, hopefully just changes your whole experience of the film in a meaningful way. I don't know if you know that famous figure from Wittgenstein or psychology of the duck rabbit or an ambiguous, you know, you can see it as a duck or you can see it. Some movies, I think, are almost like that. Right. 